we have a satellite uh, image, if we can pull that up, uh, that shows where the rover landed, as well as the flight zone and the airfield. And you can see it's just right north of where we landed. And once the rover started driving, we were able to get even better images of this area. And we have a second image here that shows what the rover saw with its navigation cameras looking directly up the airfield uh, or up the flight zone with the airfield in the foreground. And using these images and other images, we really scoured this area. We looked at every little rock and pebble within that airfield and measured it before we finally were comfortable saying, yes, this is, this is gonna be our home base for the helicopter. So what you're looking at there is in fact the first airfield on another planet, and we're planning to deploy the helicopter right in the middle of that. So next I wanna talk a little bit about our first flight and what that's gonna look like starting from this airfield that we've picked here. So first of all, the, the first flight is special. It's by far the most important flight that we plan to do. Uh, it'll be the first powered flight by an aircraft on another planet. And we've in fact met most of our goals for this project just by getting to the point where we are right now. And we'll declare complete mission success if we do this first flight that we're going to attempt. Now the flight itself will consist of a takeoff and then a climb to an altitude of three meters. Uh, and then we will hover in place uh, for about 30 seconds and make a turn with the helicopter while we're hovering and then come down and land again. And we have an engineering simulation uh, here that shows what that flight might look like above the airfield that we have just chosen. Now when the helicopter goes to fly like this, a few hours ago it's already received instructions from us on Earth that describes exactly what that flight should look like. The detailed trajectory that it's going to follow, how fast it's going to follow that trajectory, where and when it's going to turn, when it's gonna take picture, et cetera. So it knows, knows at that point exactly what we would like it to do. But it has to work very hard during the flight itself in order to make that happen. Uh, in particular, it takes images of the ground below it at a rate of 30 images per second and analyzes those in order to track the features on the ground to see how it is moving across the ground. And it combines that with other sensor measurements in order to make tiny adjustments to the controls 500 times per second to stay exactly on the trajectory that we prescribed for it and to fight off disturbances that try to take it away from that trajectory like winds and gusts. 